Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Introduction to PHP course. In today's lesson, we're going to be going over some web fundamentals and be discussing how PHP and the web work. We're going to start by talking about what's known as the client-server model, which is a model for distributed computing on the internet. We're going to talk about the HTTP protocol, which is used when browsing web pages. We're going to talk about something you may be uh, a little familiar with already, which is uh, URLs, or Uniform Resource Locators. And we're going to discuss how these different things work together to serve web pages from a web server to a client. Additionally, we're going to talk about the differences between static and dynamic web pages, go over what server-side scripting is, and then talk about how server-side scripting is used to serve uh, dynamic web pages. Uh, so first off, the client-server model is basically a distributed computing model that describes how information is exchanged on the web or over a network. It describes communication between two different parties, uh, one known as a client and one known as a server. Basically, a client is what's known as a resource or service requester. And a client makes a request to a server to obtain a resource or to have a particular service performed. On the other side of things, a server is a resource or service provider that either provides a requested resource to a client or performs a service, request, a service requested by the client. One thing to note is that um, the term client and server both can kind of have several meanings. Client can be used to refer both to uh, an actual person, a person use a web client, a person browsing to a website. It can refer to uh, client software such as a web browser and that can actually be used to refer to a client computer which is maybe a computer where a web browser is running. On the other hand, a server can be used to refer to the actual machine where a uh, server, a web server is running or it can be used to refer to the software that is running such as the Apache web server. Uh, and the way you distinguish between uh, what is meant by client or server is typically denoted by the context it's used in. So we know that the web uses a client-server model for, uh, accessing, for accessing web pages. And the way it does so is it uses a set of rules or protocols. And in, in computing, protocols are basically a, a set of rules uh, that, that denote how, how computers communicate with each other over, the ne over a network. And there are a number of different protocols out there. The one that's used in the web to browse to web pages, which you may have heard of and you might recognize from URLs that you've entered into the address uh, bar of your browser is HTTP, or, the, or uh, it's formerly known as the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And what that protocol is, is it defines how web servers and web browsers interact to be able to serve and view web pages. Uh, whenever you type an address in your web browser, such as this, uh, you'll notice that there's the HTTP uh, four-letter uh, mnemonic at the beginning of the of the link and what that is uh, basically doing is specifying your web browser that you want to request a particular PHP page uh, or excuse me a particular web page and you want to use the HTTP protocol to do it and uh, it's standard protocol used on the web to access web pages so you don't actually even when you type it and address in your web browser you could just type educator.com and you'll actually see that your browser goes ahead and inserts this HTTP part here at the beginning because that's the method used to uh, access websites. So how does one decide uh, or to tell the web, web browser what resource it wants to view, what web page it wants to view, and how to view it? And the way it does that is through a URL, which is this right here, which we had seen on the previous page. Basically, a URL uh, describes a, uh, the location of a particular resource on the Internet that you want to view, for example, a web page, and then also describes the method of retrieving it. URLs have a uh, specific form. This is a, a simplified form. If not, there's uh, additional parts that can be added to it. Basically, it contains a scheme which describes the way of or means of retrieving a particular resource. It contains a host name, which is basically the name of the server or the IP address of the server uh, that has the content that you're trying to retrieve. It can optionally have, well, it actually always has in the background a port specified, which says how, uh, on what port you want to connect to the particular server, and that's uh, port is a networking term that's used it, that describes how uh, basically computers communicate with each other, and they do so using ports, which are basically uh, 
numbered assets on a computer, for example, port 80, port 100. The last part of the URL is the path. And basically what that is is the, is the path to the uh, resource you're trying to find on the, on the server that you're uh, communicating with. So for accessing web pages, URLs typically have the form shown here. Uh, for the scheme, it has, as we saw in the last slide, the HTTP specified. And that specifies that it wants to use the HT, that you should use the HTTP protocol to load uh, a particular uh, resource on the web. In this case, the resource is a file called index.html. And then index.html is located in the PHP directory on the server educator.com. And the way that you connect to that server at educator.com is using port 80. Now, um, port 80 is the default used for communicating with web servers and is typically used out of your, left out of URLs. And actually, pretty much any time you browse anything on the web, you never see it. But behind the scenes, it's implicitly being used. And that's how your web browser communicates with the web server to, uh, know how, know, to be able to use HTTP to download a web page to your browser.